Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you all are having a great day so far. And as of the time of this video, I am glad to announce that we have reached over 200 subscribers. So thank you all once again for tuning in. I hope to continue providing similar content in the future to help everyone out. So today, over here on my stand, I have a GE Space Maker combination television with a VHS player as well. The television itself works fine. However, if we insert a videotape inside, we can see that the videotape begins to speed up and initialize, and then it spit out a uh, couple of seconds later. So we're going to demonstrate that one more time here. So it seems to begin to spin up, but then it just shoots right back out. So let's get this television over onto my desk and we can begin diagnosing it. So whenever you're disassembling any kind of CRT monitor, there are certain safety protocol which you need to follow. And because of that, I highly recommend to either look up the safety protocol first or to just get someone else who's more experienced to go ahead and try uh, to do these repairs for you. So with that being said, there is this front panel, which you can see is separated by these two pieces of plastic. Towards the bottom left over here is one Phillips head screw. There are two screws inside here. There's one on the left, one on the right, and there is another screw towards the bottom over here, which we are going to need to remove with a long Phillips head screwdriver. And once those four screws are removed, you should be able to start moving these pieces away from each other. And then begin a very carefully opening up the CRT television. Before opening it all the way, there are two more screws on the back. One on the bottom here, and one on the bottom on the left side. These are also Phillips set screws, so we are going to need to remove these as well. After those screws are removed, the back panel slides right off, and now we can begin taking a look at this lower VCR panel. It looks like on this particular unit, there are two Phillips head screws on either side of this bracket. This bracket is going to lift upwards, and hopefully we will be able to slide this piece out to take a closer look at the VCR. There are also four more Phillips head screws here in the bottom, which we need to remove to release the VCR chassis from the back housing. Depending on the TV on which you're working, there may be a few cables that you may need to loosen and keep in mental notes to uh, hook them back up. However, after some maneuvering, you should be able to remove the VCR module as well. So in my case, on this particular Spacemaker television, there is a cable over on the right and on the left, which are connected uh, using plastic uh, connector clips inside to the main board that need to be removed. But first, we need to remove a couple of screws on either side to open up this housing. And after the housing is removed, we have a better look in the interior mechanism. And it looks like we got a free gift as well. So uh, that's interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and continue on with the diagnosis. All right, so now with the television actually turned on and with the pen removed, let's take a closer look at what the VCR is doing if we insert the tape again. So it seemed that the television turned off and then it spat the video back out and it left some of the tape reel here as well. So based upon the symptoms that we've seen so far, uh, besides the pen that was in here for some reason, I believe that the moat switch might be dirty. So let's go ahead and clean that first and see if we could troubleshoot this a little bit further. To get access to the mode switch, we're going to need to lift this entire panel 
and it's held in with a few screws. Uh, I believe that there are going to be one, uh, two Phillips head screws over there, as well as another two Phillips head screws securing it to this plastic piece. So let's go ahead and zip those out and then try to see if we can move this module upwards. And on this unit, there is one more screw on the bottom that needs to be removed before we can lift this upward. And after the board comes loose, there is one more screw on the bottom of this particular board, which needs to be removed before that top piece can be removed from the assembly. So I cannot seem to find the combo switch on this particular unit. However, something that I did notice is that there is supposed to be a belt in between these two pulleys. Yeah, as we can see, it has sort of deteriorated over what must have been a very long period of time and a lot of heat. So I'm just going to clean up this gunk and then we'll see if uh, I can get this working again. Right now I have this rubber band that I have on hand, removing that gunk from the top and from the sides, as well as from the interior of the spindle here. It was not a trivial task. Let's just I'll leave it at that. It was, I don't know where this was stored or how, but uh, yeah, definitely the elements I got to it, more specifically heat, and it really uh, caused havoc to everything inside here. But now we can see just by moving our fingers with this that it's spinning freely, at least better than it did before. So I think what I'm going to do is reassemble this and go ahead and put on the tape and see if we have any other problems. And it looks like we have a picture. Let's see how long this could play. Uh, right now I have it sort of set up like this. It is continuing to play. All right, enough of that. And there you have it, another successful repair, this time in the uh, sort of TV VCR combo flavor, I guess. <laughs> Something that I wanted to mention here as well is a lot of my projects that I uh, do don't end up actually seeing the light of day on this channel since uh, they are failures, I guess you could call them. But if any of you are interested in seeing my other uh, less successful projects, then I could go ahead and maybe make a compilation and upload those on this channel as well. However, uh, that being said, uh, thank you all so much for watching and subscribing. Uh, it's unbelievable that this channel has over 200 subscribers now and it really motivates me to continue making informative and helpful content for all of you to enjoy for your entertainment and hopefully to fix uh, similar devices that you may have as well. And there are many more projects to come, uh, some of which I'm still working on. I need to just edit the video clips and find some time to put everything together and uh, make it uh, work, I guess. But in any case, uh, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.